If you want to have any question, do you have any questions? Do you think, you know, like if you see, some, if you see like someone's murdered somebody, so there's a killer, and you look at the reason why he's killed that person, and you look at, he was born, everyone is born as a clean slate. Do you believe that? As, everyone is born what? As a clean slate. Yeah, everyone as a yeah, clean, yeah, yeah. Pure, but, yeah, we don't believe like a Christian, we were born as a sinner. We don't believe that. Yeah, you're, we were born you're pure. And yeah. For example, say you lived the exact same life as the man that killed that person. You lived, maybe had abusive parents. Maybe then was like rejected from society. And then up to the point where he kills the guy, you've done the same. Would you make the same decision as him if you had done had the same experience? Do you think? Or do you think it's down to free choice? What is the question again? If so, if you live the same life as a murderer. He killed an innocent person. You, okay. you live the same life as him, completely okay. from zero to the time he killed yeah. a person. Would you make the? Would you think you would make the same decision to kill? Do you think it's because you are born as a clean slate? You are all of your experiences. Everything yeah, you, make you do is because of your experiences. Do you think that then you would also make the same decision? killing him or you think because you have your own free will you wouldn't do that and you would that's right not do first let us break it down for you okay there's a factors in islam because you know like i said islam is upon justice yes there are certain things that islam take into consideration about the person okay so if a person was raised up in society when he was uh we abused that's uh, you know harmed and psychologically that affect him mentally did affect him then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just you know but if the person like, I, I mean I came from Algeria I saw people getting killed in front of me I, 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 I lived in a time when there was civil war in Algeria I was 13 selling in the market like today I remember it, it was first day evening my cousin was next to me there was a guy uh, it was a police officer two people came Parked the car, came out, shot him in the head when I was 12, all right? I started carrying knife when I was nine. Knife, carrying knife back home. You know, we carry knives and so on, yeah? But I, I never thought in my life that it's okay. Because there's something called al-fitra within us, natural inclination that teach us within you, tell you what you're doing is evil, you know? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. If the person becomes psychologically not well, do you remember the hadith I told you, Prophet Muhammad's statement? The pen has been lifted, the pen has been lifted up from three types of people. One of them is someone who is insane, you know? But if the person is not really, is not affecting him emotionally, that doesn't not allow him to go kill innocent people. But if that happened, then there's a narration, Prophet Muhammad told us there was a man before us, he killed 99 men. He killed 99 men. And you know the story. He, he, he thought, you know what, it's too much, I need to stop. He wanted to, to a worshipper. And this hadith or this uh, story, there's many benefits we can learn. That when you want to seek, ask question, you don't go to a worshipper. He has to be a scholar as well, someone of knowledge. The worshipper said, there's no, no way, there's no hope for you, man. You killed 99 man, bro. There's no hope. He killed him 100. Then he regretted. He went to a scholar. He said, there's nothing between you and repent to Allah. You know, he said, but however, don't stay in this society. This society is evil. Go to the other village. On his way there, he died. Then they measured. He was more close to the society or the environment or the town of righteousness. Allah forgive him. Allah is the most merciful. You know, when people ask about this person, that person, remember, that's his creation. And Allah is the most merciful. But also, sorry, Allah is the most just too. You understand? So that's why, imagine I've been forced to kill someone. You know, if someone... Force, I don't know about forcing because you can, but imagine someone uh, hold my hand, they hold me forcefully. I'm not even, it's not even me, hold my hand and they start stabbing someone. They hold me by the hand, the, the, the knife was in my hand, but I've been forced, I couldn't, uh, uh, you know. Allah will not hold you accountable for it. Allah will not hold you accountable. Like now, imagine, you know, the people that uh, they walk sleeping, you know, and they do something while they're sleeping. The pain be lifted from them because why? They're not there. So Allah is the most just, you know. Well, sometimes we think about people, Allah is the most just. That's what Allah will clarify the truth when it's clear. You know, like I'm not even, for example, if I drink alcohol, but I didn't know it was haram in Islam. Allah will not hold me accountable. Yeah. Yeah, Allah is the most just. What was the thing you were going to say about coffee? 
okay. <laughs> not just COVID. In Islam, anything that harms the body, yeah, that is forbidden. Okay. For example, me, yeah. For example, once we were young back home, yeah, we had a bottle of water, like two liters. Me and my friend. Water is halal to drink water, correct? But me and my friend says, let us drink it non-stop. I we drank it after I was going to die. I didn't finish it, but you should have vomited the whole water, yeah? Now I, that is haram I was doing. Yeah. Even though the water has to be everything in balance. Yes. That's why the Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, our Prophet alayhi salatu salam, gave us the principles. That's why, sister, you know, when we say Islam is valid for every place and every uh, uh, time, because Islam is based upon general universal principles, which scholars derive rulings from it. Prophet Muhammad said, do not harm yourself and do not harm others. This applies to marriage, this applies in transaction, this applies in anything that you do in your life. That do not harm yourself and do not harm others. You understand? So there's many principles. Coffee, like I said, we love coffee, but if it's harmful for you, don't drink it. You know, like sugar, sugar likewise, Eating sugar too much if it's harmful, don't drink it. Too much of anything can be harmful. Yeah, you know, it's how you balance out, right? Yeah. So. Balance is very yeah. important. Yeah, but then, some, then you also just think, yeah, uh, that's why the Nabi the Prophet said, The extremists they will be destroyed. Extreme in what? Not just in religion, even in the religion system, even in religion. In worshiping God to go extreme is forbidden. Be balanced. Meaning here is not just a wasnak way, like when he's selling food and so on, not even the adl. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this life based upon justice. And the most and the greatest justice is to worship your creator. That's why there's a three types of oppression. There's a three types of oppression. Yes? First one, oppression against your creator. Because what is oppression? Oppression, when you put something in a wrong place, or you give something to someone that does not deserve. So you worship someone other than the true creator, you are committing injustice. The second oppression, when you oppress the people. The third oppression, when you oppress yourself. See? And Islam oppression is forbidden. Even and non-Muslims. We're not allowed to oppress non-Muslims. Prophet Muhammad told us that Allah will accept the prayer, the supplication of the one who has been oppressed, even if he's a non-Muslim. That's why we, Prophet Muhammad told us, fear the prayer and the supplication of the oppressed one.